And the first question in this episode of questions from subs came from my guy, Dominique. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope things are going well. Hey, things are going really, really good. We're really busy, but really, really good um, in business life and personal life, just everything. So I appreciate that. I hope things are going really, really good for you and really just good for anybody watching this, man. Um, and he said, uh, oh, and hope that you're having a wonderful day. I appreciate that. I didn't even see that part. So I just saw that Zach Wilson just got hurt on a scramble run, and they said it was his knee. So, yeah, Ravens are preparing then. And they, they said Zach Wilson could be back, but no. Ravens are preparing for Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco versus Lamar Jackson. Wow. Wow. This could be something. Now, as much as I love Flacco, shout out to Flack. Appreciate Flack. But I hope the Ravens, they whoop them Jets. And I really hope the Ravens whoop everybody on their schedule. But it's it's like, you know, it, it, for me personally, I, I just feel like, especially with Flacco, I feel like it's just going to be one of them games, man. I feel like it's going to be one of them stressful, stressful. <laughs> one of those stressful games, man. It's funny because I saw a comment on Twitter. Somebody was like, um, because uh, Flacco was talking about if he may had to go up against the Ravens. He's like, oh, yeah, that's, that's, it's not just any game. Obviously, we know that. And somebody was like, oh, man, Flacco over there cheesing. He must miss the Ravens. I was thinking, oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, it, should, it should be a lot of fun, man. It should be a lot of fun. Now, first and foremost, obviously, you hope Zach Wilson ends up being okay. <coughs> Excuse me. And we hope it ain't no long-term damage or anything like that. And hope that it's a clean recovery process and the surgery goes good and everything like that. Uh, but if Flacco is going to be the guy. Hey, um, Garrett Wilson, uh, one of Jets' first round picks, he said that uh, Flacco, he throws a more uh, catchable ball than Zach Wilson. Um, he said Flacco knows when to put some zip on it, knows when to take it off. Um, but yeah, the Ravens are going to be pre preparing against him. And Flacco, like... The most, I always say this, the most dangerous teams to play are teams that have nothing to lose. The Jets, while, of course, it's the beginning of the season, it's going to be week one, everybody, hey, Super Bowl hopes, Super Bowl hopes. Realistically, we know the Jets, they, they don't have Super Bowl hopes. They, of course, they can say everything, they can say all the right stuff, and da, 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 we're changing, new culture, blah, 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 but they don't have Super Bowl hopes. I mean, anything is possible until it ain't possible no more, but... Um, my point in saying that is that they will be zero and zero, just like the Ravens will be zero and zero. Um, and Joe Flacco knows that he is not the future for the Jets. And what I mean when I say that he's not going to be that franchise quarterback. But Joe Flacco has nothing to lose. He's, man, Joe Flacco been in the game for 14 years. He came in in 2008. Check out Flack. Oh, yeah, him, him and Hobo. Um, so Hobo been coaching for 14 years. But Flacco, um, he's been in the, in the league for 14 years. Um, and he knows, like, he's coming to the end of his road. It could be whenever now. Um, so he knows he's not the future. So he could be out there. He's going to be out there taking the chances, throwing that ball deep. He's going to be he gonna be trying it, man. Because he ain't got nothing to lose. He ain't got nothing to lose. Zach Wilson is the Jets' future. Flacco's not. He ain't got nothing to lose. This team, they have low expectations. They ain't got nothing to lose. But that's why they could be so dangerous. They can be very dangerous. And with it being the first game, um, I mean, I hope the Ravens, they get on the road early. But they may not be on. They may not be clicking all the way. I think they'll be fine. Though. I wouldn't even really overthink that or anything like that. But it's Flacco time. It's Flacco time. So we're going to see how this thing goes. That, that just The fact that it's Flacco. We've joked about it. Um, obviously, didn't joke about no injuries or anything like that. But way before Zach Wilson got hurt, uh, we joked about that Flacco would beat him out in camp. And we might end up facing Flacco week one. Uh, didn't expect it to happen like this, though. And didn't want it to happen like this with no injury. Um, so we'll see. Um, but anyway, back to the question. He said, first off, I hope he's okay and he gets better. But I feel like nobody's going to talk about this. But if this was Lamar, this would have been on every social media possible. I think that's, uh, that is just unfair how many critics are against Lamar saying he will get hurt. Uh, but we have seen the likes of Mahomes, Wilson, Kyler, and others before get hurt on scrambles or running plays, and they don't ever get much backlash. So my question is, why do you think so many people prey on Lamar's downfall in order to be right? 
But when it happens to others, it's just, yeah, he's hurt. I don't understand why we can't, why can't we all as fans in the media want the best for everyone? Because that wouldn't make media what it is. Um, a lot of media's job is to drive narratives, to push certain people up, tear certain people down. Um, and they wouldn't be doing their job if they were like, oh, we're going to uplift everybody. We're going to upbuild everybody. That, that, <laughs> then it wouldn't be media. Um, but with Lamar Jackson, because uh, I think just because over time they just painted him, they, did, they just painted this picture that he's a run first quarterback. And that, that's all that he is. Uh, so they, they take that and they're like, hey, this, he's going to get hurt with his play style. Right, that's it. It's just, it's just the same lazy narrative. Y'all already know what time it is with the laziness and the narrative. Uh, but his next question, he said, um, my, what are three goals you would like the team to achieve to be successful this season? <laughs> um, I was going to say Super Bowl. But I think you mean in order to obtain success. Um, I would say, uh, I mean, y'all know the first one. Uh, doing more in the passing game. Having more emphasis, uh, putting more emphasis on the wide receivers. Um, putting players, this goes for offense and defense. Putting players in position of strength. Highlighting players' strengths. That's a better way to say it. Highlighting their strengths. Highlighting what players are good at and putting them in positions to succeed. That would be number two. Um, and I don't want to say like a boring answer. Like, oh, yeah, uh, in, in the trenches, winning in the trenches, like offensive line blocking and defensive line getting pressure. Well, it, and that's true. But that seems so like just an easy, boring answer. Um, I would say uh, calculated aggressiveness. Not just being aggressive, say, hey, we aggressive. You see what we did? Look at us. We're brave. We're the big, bold, brave Ravens. But being calculated with it, being smart with it, not overthinking it, but just being smart uh, about it. So that's what I would say. Uh, he said, my second question is, what are three goals you may have for a player or players from a growth standpoint? Ooh, I like that one. Um, for Lamar, I would say seeing what we've been seeing in training camp, like with the back shoulder throws, just that continuing to get expanded. Them just expanding on that. Uh, more timing routes. Um, so that's that's like Lamar, wide receivers, and uh, offensive coordinator. That's all three of them in one. Oh, man, I just went like three in one. <laughs> just kidding. But yeah, seeing that from Lamar. Um, seeing, what, like with, with Bateman, I feel like it's so expected that he ends up being the wide receiver, wide receiver one for the Ravens, and that's cool. Um, but just seeing seeing another guy at the receiver position emerge. Seeing somebody really step up big time and be that reliable target that and just add another significant weapon to be another significant weapon because y'all know we've been talking about it all off season so but to, to if, if they're gonna roll with the guys that they got all right who's gonna be that other guy i ain't talking about market i ain't talking about a tight end i'm talking about a, a receiver so that and um hmm seeing uh kyle hamilton slowly take over Seeing him slowly take over uh, that safety role and him slowly, like, really be like, all right, this is mine. Because it's not going to be anything that's, like, handed to him right away, but to see him slowly continue to progress. And again, he, he's off to a good start. He's off to a real good start. So that would be mine. Uh, and he said, my last question is, what are three goals you have for this coaching staff or coach? Oh, that's, that's another good one. I like that. Um, for the coaching staff... Uh, I mean, we kind of talked about it earlier, but I guess we can come up with new stuff. Um, just to not overthink stuff. To not overthink and not overcomplicate uh, the game. Um, because it seems a lot of times that the Ravens, they, they can tend to do that. Um, to try to get rid of, make the game easier for everybody um, and add more flexibility uh, to people's jobs. What I mean when I say that, like, for instance, the... Uh, with Lamar being coming to the line with like five seconds left, let him get out there earlier. So he could read the defense and he could be like, all right, you know what? We're about to change this. We're about to do something different. Because what I'm seeing from this defense, nah, this ain't it. Instead of them having to rush stuff and whatnot. Um, and I would say really for the coaching staff to really enforce um, the, the, the team to do a better job of the pre-snap penalties. 
on offense because those have been continued to be killers. Ain't gonna saying that the, ain't, ain't saying that the team's gonna be perfect. Ain't saying that there's never gonna be a false start. Um, ain't saying that, but to really just try to put so much emphasis on cutting that down, and I think they will be in a much much better spot. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Team, keep it clean. Welcome to another episode of NFL Questions from Subs. Uh, and this is where you can ask me any, any NFL question you want, and we answer it in a video just like this. I don't know why I just cannot talk today. Well, I mean, I can really never talk. I'm always messing up words and stuff, but today is just, I'm like off. Uh, but anyway, um, this next question is coming from a patron, my guy, uh, Martin. Now, uh, if you would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash Vids. Um, and just shout out to y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for supporting and, and always being super active. Always coming with some fire, some crazy questions. I appreciate it. We, we all appreciate it because it gives us all something to have a little conversation about, to talk about. Um, so we, we thank you for that. All y'all that send in stuff and all y'all that participate in the comment section, answering the questions, saying how you feel about the questions with respect. Of course. But anyway, next question came from my guy, Martin. He said, I know it's been a minute since I sent in a question, uh, or but... Uh, or comment But then uh, Anyways I, I still watch all the videos Even if I don't send anything I still love the videos But hit my comment for the day Hey appreciate it He said uh, My friend was asking me Why I think EDC is a bad GM Which I don't think he's terrible I just have my problems The first one is that He's cheap Alright I wouldn't say EDC is cheap He re-signed Ronnie Stanley He re-signed Marlon uh, Humphrey I, I could not think of his name I don't know why it slipped me he re-signed uh, or gave extensions to these players. Uh, Marcus Peters gave an extension, two extensions to Justin Tucker, um, gave an extension to Gus Edwards, signed Earl Thomas to that, woo, whoosh. <laughs> he signed up to that $55 million deal for four years. Uh, he signed Marcus Williams to that uh, 70, $70 million, $72 million. I forgot what it was. Um, signed Nick Boyd. <laughs> Sign Mark, Mark Andrews. Sign Mark Andrews to an extension. It's not that he's cheap. Um, it's that in certain areas, he's cheap. Well, really the Ravens in general. Um, and I think a lot of times, and, and this is just really business. This is business in general. It's not even an Eric DaCosta thing. But what companies do, they want to get the most work out of you for the least amount of money. Um and that's, that's, that's just a business thing. That's why negotiations are done. That's why when you get hired somewhere, um, that's why, hey, this is what we're offering you as far as pay. And that's why you, you don't have to just accept it. You can be like, you know what? No, I want this. So you slide the, you slide the offer back to them with, with your new number on there and whatnot. And they'll be like, hmm, well, mm, you know what? There you go. And then y'all end up meeting in the middle. Um, well, it don't always work out like that, but... Uh, that's the hope, but it's just business. So, like with the Zadaria Smith thing, EDCA, hey, we 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 got him for cheap. We got him for super cheap. But then Zadarius was like, "What? Hold up, now. No, I ain't going for that." Um, but then on the flip side, it could be where he offers more for a certain player, like Bobby Wagner. He offered more than what the Rams offer, more guaranteed money and all. Bobby Wagner's like, "No, I'm straight." So it's it's the, it's that he's cheap in certain areas, like wide receiver. That's 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 the one, but he's not he's not a cheap GM. They they spend they spend to the cap every year, but it's just that again certain areas he's cheap in. But anyway, let's continue. He said the second problem is that his draft so far haven't had a lot of impact. Hopefully that'll change this year. Well, yeah, that has been an issue, but it's it's been getting better every year. It's been progressing every year to where there has been more of an impact every year. So slowly but surely, it seems as if things are changing, moving in a positive direction. But only time will tell with this draft and with the last draft, too. We'll see. Um, he said, my third problem is the philosophy. Like, I'm not saying he has to completely change everything, but I think it's OK every once in a while to say, hey, maybe BPA isn't the best option for us or to stop treating draft picks like they are diamonds. It's <laughs> 
<laughs> he tired of it, boy. He said, uh, and stop trying to okie doke teams with fifth round picks. It's not working. I'm not saying we need to be like the Rams, but I definitely, I, I definitely don't think it would hurt to go all in one year. Oh, I, I certainly wouldn't mind the Ravens uh, taking a more aggressive approach uh, when it comes to uh, competing for uh, a Super Bowl. Um, so anyways, I just want to send in my thoughts. I got a little more to say, but it's kind of hard for me to find the words. Shout out to team. Keep it clean. Appreciate it, Martin. Next question came from my boy, Phil, and appreciate you being a patron, Phil. He said, I know we have talked about this a lot. Fans were interested in when Rokon Smith was requesting a trade. It came out today that players who represent themselves and are still under contract cannot talk to other teams. They have said you have to have an agent who represents you to communicate with agents of teams, GMs. Otherwise, it's considered tampering. If Smith went contacting teams... <laughs> To see who's interested in him, uh, where him in Chicago will be fined and punished like Miami's owner was. That's tricky business right there. Because um, if, if you represent yourself, like you should be able to contact other teams about a trade because it would be you representing yourself. Um, so I, I guess I got to look into that a little bit more. And the next question also came from my guy, Phil. Let's make a quick little transition. He said, I know it's early and it's only been one preseason game. I know it's week one of preseason, but you have to admit, Shamar Bridges and Likely were flashing on the offensive side going for contested catches. Yes, they looked great. Um, and you had Travis Jones and Geno Stone on the defensive side. Yep, making plays. Tyler Wallace left the game with a knee injury. Hopefully it ain't serious. Could you see Shamar Bridges earn a number four wide receiver spot if he continues to shine on the field and number five wide receiver still open? Yeah, um, especially because with Tyler Wallace's injury, so much depends on that. Um, so much depends on what his injury is, how long he's out for, because that could end up making two guys uh, take up those last two receiver spots. And the last question on this episode came from another patron, my guy, MG. He said, hey, what's good, Engraving? It's your boy, MG. What are your thoughts on possibly trading Tyler Huntley for draft picks or for a linebacker and having Anthony Brown as backup? I think Snoop's had good value right now, and I don't see Ravens extending both him and Lamar. No, of course not. They, no, they, they wouldn't do that. Uh, why not trade him and get something special? Oh, something especially when Brown looked good as a backup. Your thoughts? Like always, stay safe, take care, and peace. Um, if it would have to be like a, a an offer that just the Ravens could not refuse, like they really couldn't refuse, um, because the thing about Tyler Huntley is you are uh, he has starting experience um and but he's your backup a lot of backups well, depending on the situation they don't have much starting experience but Tyler Huntley now he got like extensive starting experience the Ravens have had him for what the past two years um but yeah he so him with having that experience as your backup you like that just in case anything were to happen with Lamar um it, he's a good option to have um so I I think they would they would absolutely have to be blown away by an offer that they received for Tyler Huntley in order to get rid of him. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Well, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Right and grave it, right and grave it.